unidentifiable flying object. The UFO continues to be a mystery. Wasn't alone in space. Sightings of UFOs. Something out there. Close enough to be observed. What could it be? It could only be a thing. A UFO. Hey everybody, welcome to UFO No, the show where we separate science fact from science fiction the best that we can. We talk about everything. So far, I think we've covered pretty much the gambit, right, Mike? Pretty much. Also, hey, here's Blind Mike. Hey, it's me again. <laughs> Thanks for uh, coming into another episode, guys. This has been really fun. We're having a blasty blast on this show. And so we always like talking about great things. We got a doozy for you today. Uh, but first, before we get started, I want to remind you all, go to Facebook, follow us, UFO No Podcast. Give us a like and a share. Uh, if you're listening on Spotify or iTunes or Apple Podcasts, please give us a review. Um, some five stars would be fantastical. And then uh, if you're listening on anything else, just uh, hit the follow and leave a little comment or something. You know, it helps. It helps the show grow. So, uh, And I also want to give a, a shout out to our uh, sponsors Clarkston CBD company a uh, little place I help manage come on by uh, fight inflammation and anxiety with CBD products fantastic high quality CBD products um, all you can get Clarkston CBD code.com is where you can find us online um, anything over 50 bucks free shipping oh yeah it's true uh, and then Hell's Canyon Cannabis Company if you want craft cannabis you got to ask for hell's canyon cannabis in your local washington retailer uh when you go and shop but if they don't have it tell them to get in touch with me ben okay 208-790-8226 give me a call i'll make sure that they get hell's canyon cannabis up in that place anyways so let's get on to the show everybody all right with me on the show today is a man by the name of crow crow welcome to the show my friend (laughs) <laughs> hey, thanks so much for having me on, guys. So, uh, okay, so I'm just going to let you explain yourself because I'm terrible at trying to introduce people. I always butcher it. It's just a bad thing because I, you, you know you better than I do. So tell me a little bit about yourself, background, and, and who you are and what you do. Uh, well, currently we've been running a podcast for, I don't know, pushing five, six years, something like that, but... Most people became aware of me because of a thing I accidentally filmed through a big telescope uh, in the fall, actually on the equinox, fall equinox of 2012. Um, I filmed and filmed and filmed after that for a year. And then finally, in the fall of 2013, I opened up a YouTube channel. And it was not long before all hell broke loose because of things that I'd been filming. Um, After that, I guess. Over time, people started interviewing me. That's probably how I ended up being a podcaster. Um, But at this point, it's a big train on the track. Lot to keep, lot to keep moving. So when you say all hell broke loose, what do you mean? Like you had like like consequences for what you were saying? Did you have people coming after you? Well, it was a strange thing because back in 2013, you know, I I had been I've been technical since the Internet came to be and I never wanted anything to do with social media. I knew in 2013 where this was going. Uh, I was talking about censorship back then. Um, But when I put it up, there were like two large groups of people. The first were like, wow, that's interesting. I wonder what it is. And the other ones were like, "Uh, you fake this you're, you know, we're going to track you down. We're going to find out where you, it was unreal. Wow. Had to change my e- emails, had to change my, uh, my physical landlines that we all had back then. It was that crazy. Um, yeah. For, and it got worse because a year and a half later, I was the second guy <laughs> who filmed the lunar wave. Oh, so wow. then it really poured on, but you know, it, it mellowed out over time and you know, now it is what it is pretty clear. It's not fake. Um, it never was faked. And actually by chance, the the first time I filmed it, the way that it was filmed proved beyond argument that it was a filmed event. So, so let me, let, let's, cause I'm, I'm also in the dark as it were with this, the lunar wave. So when we, when we talk about the lunar wave and I watch the videos that you have, which is amazing. And I love the way you broke it down because I like the way you explained that you even investigated your own camera, but let's explain like how you, how you came to be on this. So, so 
What's the setup? Like, where, 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 what made you decide to film the moon that day? <clears throat> Had you been filming the moon, you know, like in, in to investigate it to begin with? So here's what happened. I was a corporate stiff. Well, I worked for myself, but I was working in the corporate world as we came in to that period of time, like 06 up to 08 and everything started to crash again, there came a point where I said, I'm not doing this anymore. What I'd really like to do is bust out my telescope that I've had since the mid nineties and just film and film and film and film. So that all began in the May, uh, in May of 2012, I think it was May, there was like a super moon. I had family members over and we're looking with an eyepiece, which is a much better view than a camera gives you. Um, at so the moon, can I stop at you the, real at, quick? What What's the difference between an eyepiece in a, resolution. In a, oh, okay. So when you're using an eyepiece, it's very sharp and crisp. When you translate over to a DSLR, particularly back then, I had 16 megapixels. Um, it's just not as crisp and clear. Uh, okay. So we're look we're looking with a, a 26 mm eyepiece through an eight inch fully robotic Schmidt cast grain telescope at the moon, and my nephew yells, "Uncle, uncle, there are black triangles going across the moon." And so I'm thinking that lucky so, little kid, I'll never so get to see he, that. He was watching it at the time and he saw them. He saw these. We were images. taking turns. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so, but here's the rub. Each one of us got up there, my brother-in-law, my sister-in-law, me for like two, maybe near three hours as the moon apparently swings through the sky from our position of viewing. These little black triangles kept transiting uh, between the end of my scope and the moon. And so that's what started everything because the next day I said, I'm going to get everything I need to put a camera on the back of this scope and I'll probably film for a million years and never catch anything like that. But as fate would have it, that was May. It was probably less than a week before I filmed my first interesting thing, but come September uh, and I filmed the infamous 2012 lunar wave, the best example we have. Wow. And it was, I, I watched it numerous times. Uh, and it, it's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Cause it, it, well, it, I, you yeah, know, I don't, I don't know how it got its name. I don't remember if I was the first person that said it or other people just started calling it lunar wave. If I had it to do now, there's things we know that we didn't know then at first, once I got past the fact, like I, I actually deleted that clip at one point thinking that it was equipment malfunction and the very same night I did that, I woke up, you know, I was getting ready to crash and I, I realized all at once, oh my God, the camera pan proves it. Ran out, restored it and realized, I mean, it shook me because there, there is no argument once you understand um, it's a filmed event. So at that point, I'm thinking, well, I'm an idiot anyhow because I'm digital and, you know, digital things don't fail in an organic way like that. It's just, it, it's all, I, my mind did what everyone's mind did. How can I explain this away? Um, that's where I was. But once I clicked over, um, you, you've got 2020 vision again. This is real. We filmed this. This is real. But since that happened, um, and at first, by the way, I thought it was intricately tied to equinoxes because the first one I filmed on the equinox day or the actual equal night and equal day day, even though the, the news lies about what day that is. Um, then the second one was near the spring equinox. Um, so wait, the news lies, later, the news lies about the equinox. Yes, probably. Um, they tell you like the one we just had, I think in Rhode Island, they told us it was on the 20th of March. It's not on the 20th of March. The equal day night event is on the 17th. And by the way, three days before the real equinox, they changed the clock for daylight savings time to whack us all out of shape. Um, but you see, it's like a sunrise. Does a man in New York, see the sunrise at the same time as the man in California? No. No, right? Well, there's an equinox is no different. It's geographical. Now, my co-host, Jason Lingren, lives down in Louisiana. So he experienced the equal day and night a day earlier. And as fate would have it, this time around, I realized that St. Patrick's Day is on the 17th. The guy who wears green looking at the cross there um, that fake dead saint is actually telling you that the Catholic Church knew when the equinox was because Ireland has the same day as we do where I am in Rhode Island. But we're kind of digressing from where I was headed. If you want me to go back. Yeah, no, I was just track? very interesting. I mean, I it's just uh, I, I love connecting dots. 
you know, so for me to connect all these together is, is fascinating. So, but no, no, certainly go back to the lunar wave. I, this is, uh, incredible. So, so what I think I was talking about how it got its name. And if I, if I was to do it all over again, I would call it something different, which will never happen. It is called what it is now, but since then it's been filmed Lord knows how many times by Lord knows how many people, mostly in front of the moon, but then finally someone shot it. It was either Jupiter or Saturn. Um, then it got shot again in front of Jupiter a number of times. I don't remember which luminary it was. Um, but then after that, you have to realize this is not centric to the moon. If I had to call it a new name now, I would call it a firmament wave because I think what's going on is anywhere in the sky that's sufficiently backlit by a luminary. Um, and by the way, when you're looking at Jupiter or Saturn, that's, that's a tiny dot to your naked eye. So you've got to have a telescope to make it big enough. But what's trippy about it is the times it's been filmed in front of Jupiter and Saturn, which is much smaller than the moon. The moon's about a half a degree. Um, the, the planet's much, much smaller. You can tell with your eyes, you know, look at a full moon, look at Jupiter or Saturn. It's a little dot, but the wave doesn't appear to go any more quickly across those two things when they're zoomed in and filmed through a scoop scope. So my best guess right now, and it's an educated guess, but I, I can't prove it is that something causes a wave to go through the firmament and if it's sufficiently backlit and you've got tools, you can probably see it. Wow. So, so why, why would they be doing this? I mean, clearly, clearly it's being done I, I don't, by. I don't think it's they. Oh. I, I don't think it's they. I think we, you know, we, we live, the world we live in has been misdescribed. Um, as I try to make abundantly clear in the film, Jason made a film of all the years that I did scope work, almost half a decade, night and day, filming as much as I could, all the interesting things I found. Um, the space agencies exist, all of them, to ensure you don't know a damn thing about what's above your head. They have misdescribed everything. Um, they've made up stories about space, then the movie theaters have helped you imagine what they want you to imagine. Think of Star Wars, think of Star Trek, think of any thousands of movies that have put these images. What's it look like when a spaceship's in space? What's it look like when you're orbiting a planet? What's, you know, all these ideas have been inserted into our minds and backed up by the media as, as the space, so-called space race began. But from so my point of view, nobody pers- leaves here. Yeah. Nobody leaves here. We are in a hermetically sealed environment. All the water that's ever been in the world is in the world. All the, anything that's been in the world is in the world. And if you want to leave, our airspace, for lack of better descriptive terms, our atmosphere, you're not doing it with matter. You ain't taking your body, you sure as hell ain't taking a spaceship, none of this. The only people who have ever done it, as far as I can tell, and I have to take their word for it because I'm not a master, is in meditation or maybe magic mushrooms or some other heightening event that makes your mind do things that the average Astral person projection can't projection and whatnot. Right, these, yeah. these kinds of things, but I, I can't. I can't confirm that because I've never done it, but I know damn well that a hell of a lot of cultures have recorded that their highest so-called gurus or masters have done it. Um, And this is why alchemy matters because alchemy does science within the scope of what nature will allow. Um, It doesn't violate principles of nature or make polluting things that would damage nature. Um, But the idea of that hermetically sealed flask from alchemy is where I view us. That's where we are. We're tuned to this place. Nobody's setting a boot on the moon or any other place. There is no damn rover on Mars. It's all Hollywood. Mm, very interesting. So, so let me ask you this. I'm, you know, cause I'm, I follow SpaceX pretty close. You know, I do believe that there are things going on there. Um, but I mean, what do you, what do you say to Everything that's going on with SpaceX, a private agency simple. that's... Yeah, it's simple. You just, you just nailed it. So when we have a supposed government agency, which is actually, most people don't know what NASA actually is. It's quasi-government and it's military. Yeah. But since it's controlled by the government, there's a theory that people have a right to know because they're paying for it. What right do you have with a corporation? None. Yeah. They can tell you everything they do is a trade secret. And who does a corporation serve? Corporation serves shareholders. 
Yeah. Not the customer, not anyone else in the world. So they're privatizing our entire world for this reason. Because then average living men and women have zero recourse. You can't vote out a corporation. So they can tell all the lies they want with basically impunity. So you think that Elon Musk and SpaceX are actually just a branch of what we've been accustomed to? That it's still part of the fakery? You know, you- you want to know who Elon Musk is? Go look at his resume. Does it say actor on Elon Musk's resume, do you suppose? Does it? Of course it does. He was in Marvel movies. He's been all over the place. Man's an actor. Mm, fascinating. Well, so... If it, if it says actor on your resume, can can we agree that that's probably true and that they're an actor? <laughs> yeah, oh, sure. Right? Yeah, I mean, if you're willing to put it so as I, uh, I'm, I'm previous work sure, history, I'm sure Iron Man, Iron Man shook hands with him, right? <laughs> oh, oh, good point. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, that's good. That's very true. That was in number two, was it not? On the face of it, man, that's we get fooled so often by forgetting common sense and and initially gauging a thing on the face of it. Yeah, I mean, that's absolutely true. And I do believe that media plays a big, huge part in us shaping uh, or it shaping our perceptions of the world. I mean, you look at, um, quote unquote, ancient civilizations, you know, I'm not quote unquote, they are ancient, uh, but uh, these civilizations that described weather phenomena or, um, you know, lunar phenomena, whatever you want to call it, that... um, put it onto something they could describe, you know, like take the Bible, for instance. I mean, that's a great example of, of people associating objects that are around them with, uh, with what they're seeing, uh, the world that they knew shaped and therefore, uh, you know, shaped their opinions of what they were seeing, whether it was actually that or here, not. That's the whole ancient. Here's Nick. Oh, I'm sorry. There's no, no, go ahead. We, here, here's an example of the power of media which is our downfall in the modern age. Um, control of the minds and, and uh, of men and women is the highest power you can have in this world, and that's what media is engaged in. friend of mine, very good friend, is very tied into the Amish community. Lots of people are becoming more impressed with the Amish because of what's going on in our world. And he asked them, how come there's no occurrence of, well, is this going to go on YouTube? No. Oh, okay, I see. So yeah, watch. let's go there. Censor style. Let's do this. So, yeah, okay. I just, I don't want to. No, I dude, you're good. So much. Ah. I don't want to do something bad to you guys. So, no. so he asked the Amish people, how come there's no occurrence of COVIDious minimus in your community? And the guy looks them in the eye and says, because we don't watch TV. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, absolutely. I mean, that's true. Your mind is, is, uh, it is absolutely, it's changed. I mean, you, once again, you formulate your opinions of the world based on how, what you are shown and if all that's controlled. Um, but the hard part for me, and I'm going to be honest with you, the hard part for me is I do believe that we've been to space. I do believe we've been to the moon. I've, I've seen, but I haven't seen what you've seen. So let me ask you this. How do you convince someone or, or how, you know, how do you convince someone that this is really happening? I mean, aside from, you know, well, I mean, clearly because I haven't seen the evidence like you have. Well, I don't. I tell them what I accept to be the truth or as close as I can come, and then it's on them. I can't control what other people think. Um, you know, belief is, in fact, the enemy of knowing. Do you want to believe in things? Because when you watch video from the news or the government, that's what you're doing. You're making a choice based on nothing more than video or a news report. So would you prefer to believe in things in this world or know about things in this world? And if you want to know the truth, you have to be skeptical. Well, I saw this thing, but prove it. Or I'll go out and do things on my own, like I did with my telescope. Um, And what you will find very quickly is that we have currently a world that runs on belief. Um, most people in the United States have no clue that their so-called federal government is actually a corporation. What did I say earlier? Who does a corporation serve? The shareholders. Yeah, that's right. Your federal government is a corporation with shareholders. 
That's who gets served, not you, the supposed people. And by the way, how come you were never told your government's corporation? And for that matter, as a good American who's proud to be home of the free and the brave, did you ever come to realize that you have never voted for a U.S. president? The Electoral College does that. Do you know how that works? Does anyone listening ever taken the time to see what sets the president or how the electro- Electoral College is put together or the insider baseball that it is? By the way, have you ever bothered to look that 43 presidents are all related to one royal personage, including Barack? Uh, if you want to wake up and quit believing in things, there's a very different world awaiting you. The problem is, is that some people don't want to let go of the life preserver. Even though they know how to swim, they are scared to death to let go of the life preserver. But we're kind of in an age change here, and that's going away. People, their their abilities, their minds, everything is, is increasing, which is what the Covidius minimus shot is about. It's out to retard this lift that we should be experiencing right now. By the way, you're like a dead person. Don't get within six feet of people. You know how we bury corpses six feet under? Yeah. You got to do that above ground now. And by the way, people, cover up your breath. Oh, by the way, people, do you understand that your breath is your spirit? Yeah, go ahead, cover up that spirit. Um, this is what's going on in our world. And I'll ask you, how many people are going for this? And why are they going for it? It's because they believe in it. I, dude, sold. I mean, I am with you 100% on that. The control aspect of everything that's going on right now, 100%, Criminal. I believe. Absolutely. And and I and against, I agree with you. Against the, the best wishes of humans everywhere. Yeah. You know, I, I definitely agree that the government has been overstepping its bounds for a long time and has now taken it into broad daylight. Uh, as opposed to before they were kind of moving in the shadows and they were doing things here and there and keeping it hush hush. But now it seems like they don't really give a fuck if you know or don't know, and they're just going to do it anyways. And they're to gonna me, try. yeah, that's the scariest thing. Um, so I agree with you there. I, you know, my only thing with once again, and I, I'm not disagreeing with you. My whole thing about this show, both me and Mike is just, observing the evidence and seeing where it lies. I mean, there was a lot of things I didn't believe and believed before we started digging into all this shit, you know, and now uh, I'm on a completely different spectrum than I was at the beginning. Um, so I feel like everything um, that I see uh, kind of changes my perspective on the truth. And so certainly when I saw the, uh, what you had uh, documented with this lunar wave or uh, or what was the other term you said you'd rather have it called? Well, it's not going to happen, but I think for descriptive purposes it's like this, you know, electricity, uh, I don't know how old you are, but when I was young, it was called cycles a second. At some point they switched it to Hertz and words have meaning, right? Why, why are we using that word? Well, that's a dude's last name beyond what it means. Everyone knows what it means to hurt something. Why did we leave behind cycles per second, which is actually a good description of what's going on? Yeah. And this is part of what we're talking about. This is the overarching control systems in our world uh, overstepping their bounds to a degree that has brought us to 3-11-2020. Go ahead, count the ways. 3-11. Everyone remember 2001? That's yeah. when, you know, what you just described, that's when the beast took its head out in the light of day. 2001. Yeah. That's when it happened. The Patriots. We're so big, and all these private corporations own everything. You can't stop us. Well, There's I, your mindset. But even then, it took them, wait for it, 19 years yeah. past 2001 to play their little 2020 game. Yeah, which is, yeah, they are absolutely playing a game, and you can see the pieces moving. You can see the players. I mean, it, that's the hardest thing for me is, uh, is the fact that it, it's it's incredible, you know? And once again, I mean, I definitely agree with you on the on the the government side of it because it's people that don't see that coming. Um, it blows my mind because how do you not see that for what it is? Um, but well, well, there is no. Be honest, there is no government. There's a corporation there that calls itself government, and they won't admit that they're a corporation. Yeah. So what do we do? I mean, what's, what's the, uh, let, let's, you know, what's the, 
Let, okay, Simple. let's say somebody wants to take the same path you did. They want to observe the moon. They want to observe the the a the, uh, Jupiter. They want to observe all these things that of what's really happening. What do you recommend? I don't think I would go in that direction because most people will never have the tools and the time to do what I did in that way. If we're talking about the sky clock, uh, what I would do is remember what I was taught in second or third grade. There's a thing called the golden rule. It tells you how to treat living things in this world. If everybody went back to the golden rule, this crap would fall down quick. Because right now we live in a world, and, and I'm just as guilty. I was in the Marine Corps during the first Gulf War, mm. and I was just fine with watching them mow over a country they had no right to touch, believing in their lies of yellow cake this and mass destruction that. Um, and it never occurred to me back then that how can I be okay watching all these people be subjugated when if it can happen to them, it can happen to me. Of course, I had to live till 2020 to be to outright prove to myself, yeah, look what's happening to me and the country I thought was immune to all this. We got to get back to treating each other and all living things with respect. Um, these systems that have been built up around us, they're, they're not going to just be taken apart in some revolutionary way, but when people quit listening, it fails. That's simple. So when you're no longer content to see other people get screwed over, um, then this whole thing begins to fall apart because at the base of what actually happened in 2020, the real contagion was fear. Oh yeah. Um, and if you want to shed that fear and start having respect for every other human being in the world and quit being convinced that some dude that looks a little different than you because he wears something on his head and some ridiculous story that he wants to go find virgins in heaven. As long as you fall for that nonsense, you are overlooking the golden rule, which you learned at a very young age. If you kick that person, it hurts them just like it hurts you. If you cut them, they bleed the same way you do. And by the way, they want their children to grow up in a better world just like you do. And if you forget that, then you're not ready to progress. You're still stuck in media cycle land. So I'm getting the sense, Crow, that your message is one of peace. And that it's we got to we got to bring this together as a as humanity in order to kind of get over the hurdles that we've got going on right now and, and finally learn the truth. I mean, what can CBD really do for you? Relieve anxiety, ease pain. Hi, this is Ben with Clarkston CBD Company. We specialize in CBD, making it simple and easy to find the perfect CBD blend for you. Talk to us about your health goals and learn how CBD works in the body and how it can benefit you. Find us at 400 8th Street across from Walmart or shop online at ClarkstonCBDCo.com. We specialize in CBD. Clarkston CBD Company. Stay healthy. Let me ask you, because I'm still, I got to admit, man, I'm still on the fence about space because i i really it's hard well, for me to think why. Let, let, let's go at that let's yeah. ask why 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 do you think space is true what have you seen in your life that makes you think space is out there i mean maybe it's because i want it to be i mean maybe that's the real you're, that's you're the best there. answer is that i want it to be i really don't i can't point to anything saying well the math on that tells me because i'm not smart enough so I'm I'm virtually uh, literally going off of everything I've only simply seen pictures, videos, right. whatever. But Star there's Trek a lot of well, and not only that, but I'm talking about like you know all the past astronauts that have been to space, the current astronauts, the current people that have gone low Earth orbit, the people that have seen. But listen to how you're describing them. Why are you describing them that, that claimed they've gone, that allegedly have gone? Isn't that really the way if you want to know things? So you said you did this thing. Now let's prove it. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. It's that simple. Adults, adults in a real world challenge things. And the problem is, is that we grew up in a country, we were told this is the best country in the world, we're the freest place in the world, and my parents were proud to be Americans. Most of my life, I was proud to be an American, until I began to realize that this, too, is just an illusion, uh, this so-called freedom. Where is it now? So if it's not here now, how is it ever here then? Um, the truth is, 
is that we did this thing called the space race with the Russians who were supposedly our mortal enemies. I got news for you. They were both engaged in the same game, fooling everyone about what's actually real in this world. I definitely so when we believe start, that. I, I always make a joke. Uh, Manson, Woodstock, Manson, Moonshot. There's the trifecta of mind work at the end of the 60s. They were so nervous about the moon launch that they had to quickly shift perception so no one would look too closely at their crappy camera footage that was shot off an eight inch monitor that showed you the moon landing. Um, they quickly invented this horrible Manson stuff, which was recently made fun of and retold uh, once upon a time in Hollywood. Who oh, in yeah. the hell? has the nuggets to go in if people really died and were massacred in the brutal way we were told and has the nuggets to just retweak the story for entertainment's sake. Um, there's your first clue, but the point is Woodstock is even a lie. That did not happen in the way you think it did. Um, I've challenged all these things, but if you look at the timeline, they were so nervous about one big story that they kept shifting the perception. And, of course, back in the 60s, people were there. Remember Altamont, right? That's when the Rolling Stones hired the, oh, the, the Hells, Hells Angels. Angels to be their security because that seems like a good idea. And supposedly <laughs> someone got killed there. It's these faked events that so come that was, one So you're saying that was fake? Where, all your news. Oh, hold on. I apologize. My phone, Somebody was calling my phone. Was tasked with making a movie of your life. Would any of it be 99% correct, or for that matter, 60% correct? Well, when, there's a scene, when there's a scene showing you supposedly saying things you said, would you have ever really said those things? I mean, that's... Well, here... Okay, so wait. So let's go back to... Even Woodstock didn't happen? It happened, just not in the way you've been told. One big tell is the biggest act in the world. Well, I caught them because of the moon. In the documentary Woodstock, they showed all the hippies coming and they did a flash to the moon. And I said, wait a minute. I was just looking at this. That's the wrong phase of the moon. So I looked it up. And in fact, when they're showing the hippies arrive and they go up to the moon, wrong phase for when really? it happened. So that's when I started going. So I went and looked. And the ticket stubs, which you can still look up online, on the back of the original ticket stubs, it says, we're going to be filming here and we own your rights if you show up here. How the hell did they know? The story goes that Woodstock was going to be a few thousand kids and then it kept growing. But here's the rub. All the tickets said Woodstock. There is no internet. There is no cell phones. Then it jumped to Bethel to White Lake. It jumped like three times they changed the supposed location. Um, how did anyone know where to go? But from the get-go, on the initial tickets they claim they sold over, I don't know, something like 100,000 of them, it says we're going to be filming. If you scrutinize the filming that is now memorialized in that documentary, there are three camera crews on some bands. Some of those bands aren't even there, but get this. Jimi Hendrix, the biggest act in the world by miles. And so in his contract, he's the headliner. Go ahead and look at the audience. Of supposedly, well, they used to say a million people. Now they're saying less than half a million. They're moving that goalpost too. Look at Jimi Hendrix. For one thing, he doesn't really even play any songs. It's almost like he's just jamming. But the biggest act in the world nobody stayed to see. There's mm. this vastly reduced audience. And by the way, the ground does not look like it was just trampled in the rain by a gazillion, you know, half a million people or whatever they're claiming. It's, it's yeah, it's a put up. Then go ahead and consider their new number, which I think is roughly, I think it's less than half a million, 400. I forget what they're saying now. Look at the roads in and the roads out. And you determine from a common sense standpoint, how did that many people get in? And so they're telling you this was three days, but everyone bailed before the third day because Hendrix doesn't have an audience. How'd they get out? I mean, that it's all, it's all a put up. They piece things together and back then it was much easier because there were people who were at a film festival mostly whacked out of their minds on drugs because that was a big operation of the hippie generation because they didn't want anything to do with war or what the older generation did so what did the people in charge do they started introducing acid which was invented in the universities and other places and they drugged the living bejesus out of that movement because they knew 
the baby boomers had a lot of kids and these kids are not down with all this war and nonsense all the time. We got to do something. One of the things they did is they drugged the living bejesus out of not just that generation, because I am the tail end of the baby boomers. And even in the 80s, we were still dealing with the end of the drugging that began in the 60s. Yeah. Well, and that's where MK Ultra comes into play. And that actually, there's a lot that ties Manson to all that, too. Manson Schmanson, the man's an actor, and they put him in jail and then killed him off. It's all nonsense. So, okay. It's all just fearful nonsense. And go look at the storyline with an adult, clear mind. Oh, the Beatles wrote an album, so we had to go do all these things, and they're butchering people. And it's just all, for that matter, go ahead and try to rationalize Tarantino's new movie. So you're telling me people lost family members in the most horrific way imaginable. And you're going to make that movie where you decide to rewrite the ending? Yeah, that did piss some people off. Oh, brother. <laughs> well, so let me ask you this, Crow. Yeah. What in this world do you believe is legit? And I, I would go as far as to say anything. too legit to yeah. quit. The one thing where we can go in this world when everything else has forsaken us when we feel like we're in a corner and there's no truth and our government's off the rails and everyone's acting crazy in the world, there is one place that's always been here that will always be here that we can go to that where there is no lie. And that is nature. If you go out into nature, there is no lie. And what's more, it is the system that made you, which we have forgotten in the synthetic age and digital age and age of medicine, which is all manufactured drugs. Um, for that matter, health resides in nature. We've forgotten that too. Uh, you want to be healthy, you get things nature makes. You don't take some pharmaceutical crap made in a chemistry lab somewhere with side effects worse than what you're trying to treat. Nature, that is the only way back. And the only measure of time is another aspect of nature, the sky clock, which I spent years filming. And I renamed it because if you say astronomy, all the astrology people, their eyes glaze over. If you say astrology, all the astronomy people, their eyes glaze over. And we've got to get rid of these divisions that have been purposely created. So let's all agree that that's the clock. The only clock for this place, because it provably is. When your cell phone says noon, guess what? It's not noon. The only noon in this world is when the sun is at the apex of its arc for that day. It's called solar noon. It's the only real thing there is. But yet your cell phone's going to say, oh, it's in an hour. It's in two hours. It's whenever this arbitrary synthetic system tells you it is. The news is going to come on and say, tomorrow's the equinox and all this other nonsense. No, it's not. We can all get on a search engine and look up when day and night are exactly equal, taking the very word itself, equa, equal, knocked, night, equal day and night. And we can prove for our feebly warped minds at this point because we've had to contend with so much we can get back well no here is that one day of balance we get two of them a year and by the way the powers that be are going to jack up our clock they're going to shift it for an hour telling us they're saving daylight guess guess what you can't save daylight not possible you want more daylight get up earlier the only way <laughs> yeah there's a there's a there's an indian chief whether or not he actually said this it's attributed and he said only a white man would cut the foot off a foot off the bottom of a blanket, sew it to the top and act like he changed something. And this was in regard to daylight savings time. Yeah. So at these crucial points in the sky clock year, which is provably the only reality of nature that we can get at, they change our synthetic clocks to knock our circadian rhythms and our, our in syncness with what would be the natural world. Every effort is made to detach you from nature. So when did but they start the all way this, back. bro? I mean, how far, how far back does this really go? This is the long game. I can show you movies from the 30s or 40s where they're already encoding 9-11. What? This is the long game. No way. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah it's, it's a world. You know, what's, what's that Bowie song? 
um, that he did with Queen under pressure. Oh, under it's pressure. It's the terror, terror of knowing what this world is about. Watching some good friends scream, let me out. Yeah. It's being trapped in, in a lie. That's absolutely true. Uh, yeah, but by us. Yeah. Because we refuse to grow up and get back to common sense and, and have respect for the thing that made us and understand that we were granted a very special gift, human beings. We were granted the divine spark and free will. Where's your free will now as you cover up the spirit of your face because someone without authority told you to do so? That most precious of gifts you have thrown to the gutter. You are the apex concern here. As a matter of fact, I would go so far as to say the only reason this world exists is because human beings have a very important trajectory with their free will and divine spark. It's even so bad that we've all been convinced that I exist at my birthday. No, you don't. You've been so befuddled, you don't realize that you were given the divine spark months before your birthday. You don't realize that at your birthday, all this Corporate shenanigans goes on with birth certificates and the creation of false persons, and uh, you have no idea, but you should, and you can, and when enough people do take the time to grow up and say, hey, I'm a human being, I've got free will, and the divine spark, which nothing else here has, a wolf doesn't have it, an animal doesn't have it, human beings have it, we're special, we are the highest in the endeavors of life. And we've got to work out all the possibilities here with our free will. And the sky clock shows us the way there too, because it marks ages. And this whole thing that's gone on in our world is because the people in charge know about this. So they said, Hey man, when we start getting to the new millennium, people are going to start waking up. We got to throw this into high gear. We got to go for a last ditch effort. And if it doesn't work, we are screwed. We're going to knock down buildings in broad daylight, and then we're going to lie about it. We're going to create a fake idea that humans can kill each other simply by touching them. We're going to get them to cover up their God-given spirit. We're going to get them to cast aside their God-given free will. I, I and how yeah, well absolutely. has it worked? Yeah, I mean, that's it, it did work. It's amazing how many people just don't question anything. And that, that blows it's, me away. So I'll, I'll go, I'll go so far as to say this is not going as they dreamed of. It's just listening to the news makes you think it is. People are rejecting their jab as they call it. Yeah. Words have meaning. Look up that word. Go ahead. Look up what jab means. That's what the media calls it. It's not something healthful by the way, yeah. but there are 40% of the Marine Corps is, is said to be turning it down. I was in the Marine Corps and I know I actually turned down shots. And I know what you got to go against. Now, those there's some brave people, your government property, and you're saying, no, I did that. So how is it that when you're just a private individual, you don't have the gumption to say no? But I'm here to tell you, tons and tons of people aren't going for it. It's kind of ironic that mostly a lot of minorities aren't going for it, but they never had the trust to begin with because they've been marginalized so often. Yeah. So, but so what there's going to we... be there's going to be a thinning out probably. We're going to lose some people during the course of this. But again, we're human beings. We're special. Human beings don't end when they die. It's all energy, man. It's all energy. It's all energy. Uh, so, what do we, you know, what what do we do as a people? I mean, what what's the best your best guess at how someone could be effective in learning the truth let's let's say they're listening to you right now being like fuck yeah man i'm with you 100 percent." so where where do where do they go where do they start you've got to change your mind and it takes arbitrarily about a year you've got to unknow everything you were taught because almost everything you've been taught is nonsense to prepare your mind to believe in things you shouldn't believe in you have to set aside believing in things and opt to know things you have to go so far as to say one and one is no longer two. And you have to think to yourself, one and one. Okay, it is two, but I just noticed something. It's also 11. When two. you do this for a year, throwing out everything, it's like this chemical change in your mind happens. And this beautiful gift called intuition and perception that you've lost for most of your life comes back. And at that point, you get to be 
in a place that I describe as you can smell something's burning in the kitchen within the first second you see a thing. You may not know what's burning or why it's burning, but no one can tell. It's like someone telling you the sky's green. No, it's not. I know the sky is blue. It's yeah. like that, but it's like with a word from media, a sentence here, a title of a movie, some claim from some official place within a second, I can hear that the ring of truth is not in it. That's where you can be. Once you throw out all this nonsense of believing in things and you get back to being an adult, take off your diapers, challenge things. Should I be eating that? Should I be accepting that? Why are they doing this thing? What authority did they have to do this thing? When that happens, another thing will happen. You'll begin to realize what I told you is true. These systems are all lies. They're fugazi. They're synthetic. The only reality is nature. And there is no lie there. If I learn something in a field from a bird or a tree, it is gospel truth. I will never have to question it. And when I get to there, I'll begin to realize there's a sky clock up there. Why have we ignored it? Um, it's the only reality of time in this place. And by the way, look, an eclipse happened. What does that mean? What is that marking? And we just came through a millennium. Are we changing ages? What did the last age supposedly mean? What is supposed to happen in the coming age? As a cliffhanger, we are leaving the age of water ideas, and we've entered the age of air ideas. And you can see this in the language. I saw recently a beer named something air. I saw recently that it was no longer an ear bud. It was an air bud. It goes on and on and on. The people in charge know we've done the shift, but they've made you believe that that's just hippy-dippy astrology, and only the idiots believe in that. But that, too, is something you've chosen to believe in. You want to go out and look at the sun and the moon and fake like they don't garner your utmost respect? Because if you feel that way, you're temporarily lost. So you had mentioned earlier about, uh, you know, astral projection and meditation. Have you have you experienced anything like that or any type of you know, psychedelic experience that's led you to believe in alternate realities or anything like that? Um, look, I grew up in the age of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Uh, you know, I've done LSD. I've done mushrooms. Anyone that has understands the human mind can do amazing things. You could hear color. <laughs> you could, <laughs> you know, you can yeah. see music. You can do all these things that are normal. And you've been convinced, well, you're high. So that's all fake. But some people, like tribes that use ayahuasca, understand there's a spiritual aspect or can be if you're not just interested in getting high. Have I ever astral projected? No, I haven't. Have I meditated? Yes, I have. And it's critically important. As a matter of fact, early Christians were all about meditation, vows of silence, the monk in his cell. That's all fallen away from the Western traditions. But the human mind is maybe the most amazing thing there is. You know, they taught us that mind precedes all. I, I challenged it. I didn't know if it was true. It is true. You can prove to yourself it's true. Your mind precedes everything. And if you proxy that out a little bit, you can begin to understand why the news is creating fear. Because if you can make 100 million minds fearful, guess what? You've changed the reality of our world. Yeah, absolutely. There it is. Mind absolutely. precedes all. So if you could boil down your message into a one-liner like Arnold Schwarzenegger would throw out, what would, what would it be, Crow? Belief is the enemy of knowing. Oh, that's awesome. I love that. That sums it up so perfectly. Where can, uh, where can people get a hold of you and see you? Because I, I know uh, I subscribe to your channel, and uh, I, I've been going through your videos. Like I said, I watched the... Uh, lunar wave video multiple times and i was uh i just which you can't search for by the way if yeah. you search lunar wave you don't get crow crow's lunar wave yeah they they knocked down my channel in 2017 they did put it back three weeks later but before they took it there were almost 20 some million returns for lunar wave and crow now if you do just lunar wave you get some returns put crow on it you get a couple thousand for most people wow. so they've kind of removed all that but where people can find me i do have a youtube channel called crow triple seven but that's 
not going to be there a lot longer because I'm about done playing that game. <laughs> uh, all my stuff will be centered at crow triple seven radio.com. C R R O W seven, seven, seven radio.com. There's two R's. I'm launching a new website within the next week or two, and I'm going to be serving my own videos. As a matter of fact, it's been years since I've been able to get out my scope because of medical reasons. I had to have a surgery oh. um, and I will be getting back into filming with my scope this spring in Rhode Island, but crow triple seven radio.com. We produce two well-researched podcasts a week. We do another live show on Jason, my co-host secrets of Saturn on YouTube. Um, we have all kinds of stuff going on. Recurring members get the, the two hour film, shoot the moon for free. Um, that covers the five years that I filmed nonstop and has, damn near every interesting thing I have. There's a little orb that comes into a chemtrail and shoots like two plasma beams. That's in the film. All five lunar waves I shot are in the film. But one thing we didn't touch on is the second sun. That Oh, that's right. Yeah, what's the second sun? I mean, clearly there's it's... More than, there's more than one sun, it turns out. And there's a lot of people who knew this. Um, but I accidentally discovered it in 2015 with a hydrogen alpha solar telescope. But at the time, I didn't have a lot of sun experience, tons of, of moon experience. So I was a little nervous about saying what I thought might be going on. But it's been replicated a couple of years later. Now it's been shot in San Diego, Colorado, Houston, South Carolina, I think. Recently, a polarized film test was done on the sun you don't see, and it was eclipsed. The sun you do see was not. Um, if you go look at pictures of Jesus, and John the Baptist, you will begin to understand why they're holding up two fingers all the time in their blessing. If you go to Masonic woodcuts or those chalk uh, teaching boards, whatever they call them, the Masonic line images, there's always a hole in the cloud coming from outside the picture with energy or light hitting our sun and our moon. Uh, people that I know who are doctors who have been trained in Ayurvedic and Chinese and older methods, when I talked to them about this, they said, yeah, Crow, you didn't know that? We were taught a long time ago. There's a source sun. We call it the spiritual sun. Wow. The it's spiritual quite a thing. Sun. And that's what's going to be the next big deal in this new age we are entering. So what, so they're going to actually come out and reveal this? Mm, I doubt it. They've been lying about it for so long. How are you there? You know, how do you, how do you tell a lie? How do you tell the lie that we've got three satellites around the sun and get out from under the proof that there's more than that. And by the way, you can't get three satellites around the sun. And by the way, the sun is not 93 million miles away. And by the way, the moon plays no role in a, in a lunar eclipse, which I proved outright in uh, the full solar eclipse of 2017, having filmed every eclipse, lunar and solar, for years. The, wow. the Vedics told us the truth on what happens during a solar eclipse. It's the nodes, K2 and Rahu, head and tail of the dragon, the nodes. That's actually what's causing the eclipse. The nodes, huh? Yeah, you know, which is basically the way we get information to an imaginary place in space where like an equator and an orbital ecliptic cross each other. It's just like an imaginary point, but it's not imaginary. It eclipses the sun. That's fascinating. And so, so these are all, so it's all in the movie. And Shoot the Moon, which is on Vimeo On Demand or given away free to recurring subscribers of Crow777radio.com. Okay. So go check out Crow and your go find his YouTube channel before it gets removed because there are some very interesting facts on there. Uh, like I said, I backed that, everything up, so you know it'll be on my site. Oh, that's right, that's right. And then you've got everything on your site, so go check them out. So Crow, thank you. I mean, you have unloaded a wealth of uh, uh, ponderings that uh, I'm going to take forward, and I, it just my head is whirling because I'm like what kind of a world am I living in now? You know, I'm questioning everything. <laughs> so, uh, but that's good, right? I mean, that's, an illusion. that's what, that's what yeah, we got to do. Illusion gotta, made by your own mind. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to try and change that. Thank you, Crow, for expanding our minds today very much. Cheers. Cheers. And, and, and I wish I could have got to talk to blind Mike, but yep. thank you so much for having me on. And I'd like to wish you a happy, healthy and higher minded new era. Thank you. And he's here. He's just I'm, quiet. I'm here. <laughs> 
<laughs> he's just he's just quiet. He's he's more of an observational I'm spectator. Just a listener. <laughs> and maybe that should be silent Mike. Silent Mike, yeah, blind and mute. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Well, thank you, everybody, for joining in to the show. Once again, uh, go on Facebook, UFO No Podcast. Go check out Crow, um, and then give us a like and a share, as well as uh, all of his stuff. And then uh, make sure and uh, help spread the word of our show. Give us a subscribe if you're listening on iTunes, Spotify. Give us a, a review, any of that good jazz. Follow us, and uh, we'll catch you on another fantastical episode of UFO No Podcast.